Good morning, boys and girls. Uh, this is uh, Auntie Windsor once again. I wish it was possible to see you, but uh, I'm imagining you are paying attention behind those cameras. And uh, we had Christmas yesterday. Uh, so today is the Lord's Day, and uh, we are here now to um, celebrate a little further um, uh, about Christmas that happened yesterday. It's a time of celebration. Christmas is a time of celebration, but many people do not understand why we celebrate, why we celebrate Christmas. For some, it's a time of mindless celebration, and others, it's really just a time when they're just not happy, as we'll hear about uh, uh, the shepherds and about uh, King Herod. So the shepherds were happy. Uh, King Herod was not happy. But particularly today, I'll bring you a lesson, a special lesson about the wise men, who were also called the Magi, the wise men. So I want to thank you. This is uh, really uh, uh, the, the, the end of the year and we're beginning a new year. I really want to take this time to thank you so much for having sat, for those of you who sat very faithfully and listened to Sunday School lessons, Thank you so much and keep it up. And uh, as we go into a new year, we really want you to think, even before the new year begins, we want you to think through uh, whether you are ready to start off in the new year. So as I bring to you the story of the wise men, we'll take a moment now to pray. And please, please stay with me. Let's pray, shall we? Our gracious God and Father in heaven, we want to thank you once again for this uh, um, opportunity to uh, listen to the Christmas message about the wise men. We thank you, Father God, for having been with us throughout the year. And our prayer, Lord, now is that you would be pleased to let the children sit still. And Lord, if it pleases you, please open the hearts of many that they may understand the word of God for these things are given to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please be present now to speak to the children, perhaps one or two or many, in a especially different way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so as I said, the story is about the wise men. And we'll open our Bibles, if you have them close, and we'll read from Luke chapter 2, uh, verses 8 to 15, and uh, Matthew chapter 2, um, verse 1 to 12. So the, the one on the wise men is actually from Matthew. I'll start with that one, and then we'll see if time allows, if we can read in um, the book of Luke. So Luke chapter 2, verse uh, 1 to 13. If you have your Bibles open, we shall read together. It reads, Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them into Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, Bring back word that I may come and worship him also. Verse 9. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which 
they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And, they, and when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Perhaps, uh, children, I will not read the book of uh, uh, Luke, but that account is where the angels um, presented the good news to the shepherds. So this account of the wise men happens much, much later when uh, Mary and Joseph were no longer in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the inn. The Lord Jesus was not in the manger. They were actually in a house. This was much later. So we'll remain with this one. So boys and girls, we have talked about how this news was broken um, to the angels, I mean, broken by the angels to the, to the shepherds. But we've also spoken about how the birth of the Lord Jesus was foretold many years ago. From the, from the scripture, we've actually read that there was prophets that spoke these words and spoke about specifically the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And boys and girls, I'll tell you that God spoke through these people and it was the Holy Spirit that moved men to speak about what would come, what would pass, about the Savior who would be born to mankind. And so these prophets spoke, but they never spoke in their own accord. They never spoke from their own heads. So we read about the wise men who were from the East. I'll tell you a bit about them later on, but I'll tell you that the wise men rejoiced. The Bible tells us that they, they did rejoice. Now I want to tell you um, a little story. Or maybe I want to ask you to imagine. Imagine one thing. I love, I love, I love us to imagine, to think about, about uh, why things are, why, how they are, by imagining. Okay, so let us imagine that you have a friend huh, who is always around you and that friend does wrong all the time. Imagine a friend who is always doing wrong. Yeah? You give them something, they break it. Uh, you, you tell them a secret, they mess it up. They can't tell what they shouldn't tell. Yeah? Or sometimes it's a little brother or a little sister who's never doing right. How would you feel? Many times you don't want to spend time around that person, do you? You want them far from you. Or the other way is you try and help them. Huh? You try and help them stop uh, 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 doing the wrong thing or breaking the wrong thing, you know, breaking things that you haven't, uh, you know, you've entrusted them to. So in the same way, God feels the same when he looks at sinners. God is perfect but he's surrounded by sinners who sin every day. And the Bible says God is angry with the sinner every day. So you can imagine, remember what I said, what would you do with someone who's always doing the wrong thing? You either want to get them away from you or you want to help them. And so God in his kindness has chosen that he will help the sinner. And in his kindness and mercy, he provided a way out for all sinners who uh, needed to see the way to the Father. And that way to the Father is through his Son, the Lord Jesus. And the Bible tells us that the Lord has said this about his Son. This is the Son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. So... God provided a way out for sinners who do wrong every day and, and he requires that we listen to the Son. So you can imagine why people were excited when 
the son who was uh, foretold when he's coming really actually happened. The son actually came into the world. So the promised Messiah had come. So again, we talk about the wise men and I want to tell you that the wise men, for them, they were told about a star. They had learned. There were people who used to gaze the skies. They used to look at the skies. And they knew that stars were, were signified something very important for them. And so they had, had heard that a star, there would be a star, a, sp a special star, that would signify the birth of the king of the Jews. And these people were actually from Babylon. Do you remember the story about Babylon? Uh, what I remember about the, uh, Babylon was the place where the Lord sent disobedient Israel. But even there, there were men who feared God. There were prophets, as I told you, who told us about what God was doing, even while in Babylon. So these men, the wise men, heard about the coming Messiah. Back then, they had heard when Daniel was alive, Daniel spoke about the coming Messiah and so many other prophets spoke about the coming Messiah. So in short, everyone in the ends of the earth, uh, you know, the gospel, the good news about the Lord Jesus Christ would reach the ends of the earth. And at that time, it had even reached people in the Far East who were pagans. They never believed in God. So boys and girls, the lesson about the wise men as I carry on is that they heard the Lord spoke to them in a specific way because they were people that gazed the, the, the heavens, the skies. The Lord also spoke to, to the shepherds who were very simple men and he sent angels to, to speak to them in the open air. But what about you? Are your eyes open? Are your ears open? Are you seeing that God has sent you people uh, and that he also speaks to you about the good news of the Savior? Of course, you hear about this through Sunday school. The Sunday school lessons are saying you've been paying attention to. You hear about the Savior, the Lord Jesus, even through um, your parents, uh, YP. You listen very faithfully. But are you still not saved? Are you still not a Christian? Are you still not, not responding in your heart to receive the Lord Jesus Christ? I'll tell you that the wise men actually journeyed for a very long time when they saw the star. They began to journey and it took them close to two years looking for the Lord Jesus. We can read this in Matthew chapter 2, verse 16. Uh, it says, um, verse 16 says, Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Yeah? So, remember earlier we read that the wise men had gone into the king's presence, into King Herod's presence, and they had told him about this, the sign of the star. And he said, tell me, tell me about the, 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 the king, this king, and I also want to worship him. But they had not gone back to him, having been divinely warned after they had visited the Lord Jesus. They went another way. But the Bible tells us it took them that long to be able to see the Lord Jesus finally. Two years, close to two years. So what did the wise men do when they finally met the Lord Jesus? Remember we said he was in a home with his father and mother, and he was still a babe, but um, they met him. 
and verse 9 tells us of Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 2 behold the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was when they saw the star they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy and when they had come into the house they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him and when they had opened their treasures they presented gifts to him gold frankincense and myrrh I have something here to show you something of what looked like the gifts so they presented gold so this must have been very very big gifts eh? these are just small just to give you an example so they presented gold they presented frankincense and they presented myrrh very sweet smelling I'll tell you now did you really read what I've just said they worshiped the Lord Jesus when the wise men went to see him they worshiped and they gave him gifts so they did two things worship and they gave him gifts now do you remember boys and girls the first and the second commandment the first and second commandment tells us to worship only the one true living God and not to have any idols so if the if the magi the wise men worshipped then obviously they were worshipping the king of kings they were actually worshipping God so this was no ordinary babe Jesus is the son of God so I'll tell you a little about the meaning of the gifts remember I said they presented to the Lord Jesus gifts of gold gifts of incense and myrrh yeah so gold represents royalty do you know what royalty means anything to do with with um, kingship yeah? anything to do with high office high people very important people now to very important people you don't give them small things that don't make sense so they knew that and they gave gold yeah but this was probably meaning a little more when you talk about the Lord Jesus to the Lord Jesus it also shows that they acknowledged they accepted that Jesus is King remember what I said you don't just worship anyone you worship God but two when you are worshiping even God we give him the best of ourselves and so that's what these men did so they gave God accepting that Jesus is king they gave incense yeah frankincense incense do you remember what incense is used it's a fresh smelling aroma when you open it it gives a very beautiful nice fresh scent yeah incense this is not incense but this is just giving an example that they were fresh oils so there was frankincense frankincense and in the Bible incense is symbolic in the Bible of uh, prayers the prayers of, of, uh, of uh, the high priests rising up to heaven so this was also symbolic of Jesus being the high priest who would go before God to pray on our behalf yeah remember our need we're like that friend I told you about that friend who's always doing the wrong thing now in order to go into God's presence you need someone who will go on your behalf and this is where God said Jesus will accept your prayers on 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 your behalf Jesus will, will bring the prayers to God so that's what incense was probably uh, uh, speaking about but myrrh do you know when myrrh was used I don't know what myrrh smells like but uh, I have something of what would imagine this is myrrh smells smells like oil so myrrh in the Bible was often used as a burial oil yeah it was used as a burial oil and in a sense this could have been foretelling the death of the Lord we really don't know but these these 
gold, frankincense, and myrrh were significant in the Bible. And so these were presented to the Lord Jesus. So as I draw to a close now, I want to just remind you that the wise men went to the Lord Jesus. And uh, these wise men went, and before that, they were men who had spoken over and over about the Lord Jesus, about his coming to earth. These people were called prophets. Remember? I said that happened years, for thousands of years. Even the, the men from the East, these wise men, heard about this Jesus. And they also went. The moment they saw the sign, the star, they got up and went to worship him. And we said that they journeyed for a long time. So they, they didn't take it lightly. It was something very serious. They paid attention when they saw the star. And as we said, when they actually now went into his presence, they presented, they worshiped him and they presented gifts to him. In short, they treated him like a king. Because Jesus is truly the king of kings. So now I started by telling you that this is a special message over Christmas. Yeah? So Christmas is here and Christmas reminds us that Jesus came to die for us. Yeah? And I'll tell you one thing. There are many people today who are taking God's word seriously. Like the wise men, there are many people who are taking it seriously that what God said in the past is truly going to happen. And believe me, boys and girls, there is nothing that the Lord has not told us that has never happened, just as he said it, he would. Can I say that again? I say it another way. Everything that God has said in his word will happen, will happen. It will come to pass. And so the coming of the Lord Jesus was something that was spoken by prophets many, many years before he came. And it truly happened. Yeah? And similarly, the Bible tells us that certain things will happen and they will truly happen. Some of these things are that you and I will die one day. That after that, there's a great judgment that is to come. And also, that everyone will see the Lord Jesus Christ with our own eyes. Even those who are refusing to believe. Those who are refusing to accept that they can receive life in exchange for his death. And this is what I'm telling you today. That you can take this message seriously to accept the Lord Jesus Christ who God sent, like I said earlier on, who God sent and said, this one, this Jesus, is the only one who pleases me. Listen to him and you'll be saved. So, boys and girls, I want to ask you, or oh, I want to just say to you, you can go to the Lord Jesus Christ today. You can accept that. He was once a baby that grew and that died. Yeah, he accomplished what he came to do here on earth, just like you. Do you not agree that you were once a baby? Isn't it that you are young today? But you won't remain young. You will grow and perhaps die. Similarly, the Lord Jesus was once that baby who was worshipped, but he grew to be a man who pleased God. The Bible says, he grew in favor and in stature, in height. Um, but he grew in favor with both God and man. So he did it for you. He did what you are failing to do. You can't please God on your own. The Lord Jesus Christ did it for you. And so this is the message of the cross, the message of Christmas, that if you accept this, 
you the best gift you can ever give to him is to accept that he died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead for you and you'll be saved so boys and girls do not wait until the new year you probably may not have that time as I said to you there are certain things that are true about God's word and they'll come to pass and one of them is the fact that you will die who knows you might not see the new year uh, not frightening you but I'm saying this is real so what I encourage you to do is to go find a quiet place kneel down before God believe he's listening to you and ask him to forgive you that you are a sinner and ask him to make you his child and you like the wise men will be rejoicing like the shepherds you will rejoice and Christmas will have a different meaning for you thank you bye bye